Hey everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've been using iTerm and ZSH for a while now on my Mac laptop for work. I feel like it just really takes your productivity to the next level, especially if you have some ZSH extensions. And I recently learned that you can do it on Windows. I had to try this, I have not done it yet. And I thought we might as well go on this journey together to try to bring ZSH to Windows. Let's jump right in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually install the Windows Terminal from the Microsoft Store. It's a fairly new project by Microsoft, and as someone who uses iTerm on Mac, I really like some of the features compared to the default terminal. I already have it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click Launch. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty bland at the moment, but we're gonna spice it up as we go along. One of my favorite features on this is that you can actually split panes with Alt Shift equals for vertical, Alt Shift minus for horizontal, and Control Shift W for closing the current pane. This is one of the reasons I loved iTerm, so big fan. Now you want to go ahead and install a Windows subsystem for Linux. This lets you run a Linux environment on your Windows machine. I'm going to go with Ubuntu here. Then you just want to open it up and make sure it installs. Except it won't because you actually need to enable this feature on Windows first. So go ahead and search for Windows features in the start menu, and you can open up the application that will let you toggle the feature for Windows subsystem for Linux. You'll probably need to restart your computer after this too, since you're enabling a new environment. Now you can actually install the Windows subsystem. And after that, just open up Ubuntu as the shell from the Windows terminal. First things first, we have to upgrade and install any dependent packages for Ubuntu. So I just ran sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. That took a while, so I skipped through some of it. And now we can finally install zshell. We just run sudo apt install zsh and that's it. I'll post a link to some resources with the commands in the description. The next thing we want to install is oh my ZSH. This is a tool that lets you manage your configurations and plugins and all of that for Z Shell, and it makes everything super easy to set up. This one needs a curl command for the raw install script, so don't worry. Again, we'll post in the description. All right, so this part here is my favorite, making everything look pretty. So first thing we need to do is actually clone the Git repo for the Power Level 10K theme. Then we open up the Z shell RC file with a text editor, in this case I chose Vim, and just replace the Robbie Russell default theme with our new customizable theme, which will be power level 10k. And after you've updated that, you can just source the file or reopen your terminal and you can start configuring your shell. No more bland terminal prompts, we actually get to add some color and info, and it's all interactive. And that's it, we're configured, we have Z shell. You can basically stop here and you have a beautiful new shell to use. But I thought I'd throw in some of my favorite plugins and extensions I've used in the past and show you how to get them set up. The first one here is gonna be Fuzzy Find or FZF. Most of these extensions were actually recommended in a Medium article that a friend of mine wrote. So I'm super glad they were written somewhere because I never knew I needed these. I'll link the article on how to install it in the description, but how this one works is Basically, if you've tried hitting Control R to find a command you've written ages ago, this basically searches your entire life's history to find it for you. And I reuse commands a lot, so yes. Next up is Z Shell Auto Suggestions. This is another one found through that really helpful article. And how this one works is it basically acts as an optional autocomplete while you type. It takes your most recent command and lets you hit the right key to just finish it up. So think of it like a Google search suggestion. So here's actually an example of how to add the plugin with oh my Zed shell. You just open up the zshrc file, scroll down to plugins, and add it to the plugins list. But not with a comma like that though. You actually need white space between your plugins, as it says in documentation just above that that I totally read. And here's some fuzzy find in action for me trying to source the file and activate the changes. And here I've realized my mistake, so I'm just going to go ahead and fix that. So this one's a new one that I actually haven't set up before, but I thought I might as well. ASDF is a version manager that lets you view and install specific versions of things like Python or Node. So think of it as NVM, but for everything. This is super helpful if you need to switch between different versions of Node or Python for different projects. 
And again, this is really easy to set up thanks to our old friend, oh my ZSH. And we can just go ahead and add it to the plugins this time correctly and make sure that we propagate the changes. Wow, plugins are so easy. I wish my entire life was like this. So here I decided to install Python as an example by checking the list of available versions and then setting it as my global version. So here you can see Jupyter, you can see PyPy, you can see Miniconda and Anaconda, and then we have the normal Python versions. And for whatever reason, 3.9.1 was speaking to me, so I'm gonna go with that one. So now that that's installed, you can see that we don't actually have a version configured for Python at the moment. So we can go ahead and set that as our global version that we've just installed. And if we check it out now, it should work. All right, so we can't go anywhere without actually setting up this awesome shell as my default. After opening up the settings file for Windows Terminal, I just need to find the GUID for the shell that I want to make my default. So in this case, Ubuntu. So this GUID right here, we can see it's tied to Ubuntu. So we're just gonna copy that and paste it as my default shell. Et voila. I reopen the terminal and it automatically opens up my Z shell. All right, I hope some of you found that helpful and you've gained some inspiration to try this out yourself. Comment below if there's any cool Z shell plugins I should try out. I'm still pretty new to this, so I'm always down for some ideas. Thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe to join me in my next video. See you soon, friends.